This month on The Card Life, presented by Loop. The artwork that was representing those athletes still was artwork from the 50s. I said, you know what, every athlete should be treated like a, like a comic book superhero. I didn't know when I set out that a book on a pack of baseball cards would intersect with race politics and relationships with spouses and kids. Welcome to another episode of The Card Life, presented by Loop. I'm your host, Matt Strom. Back with the team this month, and we're gonna show you The Card Life from Oakland. This month, we'll introduce you to a sports card design legend who calls the Bay Area home, and interview an author who went on an 11,000 mile journey inspired by a pack of baseball cards. Terry Smith may be best known for his iconic ProVision cards of the early 90s, which were the first cards in history to show athletes not just in action photos, but as superheroes through art. But Smith's influence on the hobby goes well beyond the ProVision sets. In his studio in San Jose, he shared some incredible stories from the hobby and revealed a stunning card set he's never publicly shared before. My mom played tennis, uh, volleyball. My dad played semi-pro basketball. I had uncles that played professionally. I had uncles that played for the Globe Trotters. We had, you know, family members playing professional football. So for me, it was definitely something that was in the family. Um, uh, family get-togethers, cousins, and everybody. You know, we we played against each other. We competed. <laughs> the family competition might be stiffer than any other competition I faced. You know, all through my career. Collecting cards. I did collect baseball and football, but basketball was the main. Thing that I liked. So I remember there were no basketball cards. Um, you know, Topps made a set in 1958, 61, 62, somewhere in there, Fleer made a set, and then they were gone again. And so I remember, I think I was eight years old, and basketball cards. Oh yeah, they were back, right? And we know the reason they came back, a guy named Lou Alcindor. For you younger folks, that's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I was in LA, um, I knew people that had played at UCLA, so, you know, I needed Lou Alcindor cards. Got to play basketball in L.A., high school ball in L.A. You know, I did well enough to earn a scholarship, made that decision to go to Stanford, which was a, a solid decision for me um, because it definitely helped me in my life after basketball. The basketball career was over, so I started focusing on my art. I have this degree from Stanford, but the degree was in economics. I'm not a suit or tie guy, I really didn't go in the office. A buddy of mine owned a comic book store, you know, in Palo Alto. So I started working in the comic book store and, and working on my art. And Donruss had these Diamond Kings. And I looked at them and, I, you know, I appreciated Perez's art, but I just kept thinking, if I'm a kid, I, I, I'd want something different. Athletes, you know, in the 80s um, were different in terms of what they represented in terms of pop culture. They started to become our superstars. But the artwork that was representing those athletes still was artwork from the 50s. So if you look at what was being done, you had kind of a headshot and then a couple of action shots that were kind of collaged together and that was considered sports art. And if you go back to my comic book days, I said, you know what, every athlete should be treated like a, like a comic book superhero. So I called the style sports fantasy and I started painting images that imagined the athletes in a way that I thought their fans saw them. So hence the Dwight Gooden, Flamethrower was the name of the painting. What I did was I sent the image along with my idea of what art on card should be. I sent it to Topps, I sent it to Donruss, and I sent it to Fleer. And that was that, nothing happened. More with Terry Smith right after this. Most people don't know this exists. And most people don't know that, nobody knows I have it except for one person.
Card Collecting 101 is presented by Loot. Today, let's talk about autographed cards. The first is easy, on card. That means the autograph is physically signed on the sports card by the athlete. They tend to be more valuable because the player physically handled the card he or she signed. The second is most often called a sticker auto. A player signs a book full of stickers that are later applied to the card. A sticker auto allows card companies to keep a stash of player autos in stock and also make it easier for them to create multi-signature cards. Two years later, <laughs> I get a call from uh, a VP at FLIR uh, and he goes, hey, um, I found this, uh, FLIR had been sold and he found it in the desk of his predecessor. He said, I kind of like these, uh, let's work something out where you'll do these for us. So uh, that's what led to it and he came up with the name ProVisions and that's where we ended up. So that's how that first set of black bordered ProVisions came about. I picked the athletes, I designed uh, the products. Uh, basically, they gave me you know, free reign to do whatever I wanted to do, select the athletes, come up with the images, come up with the themes, names, name the pieces, uh, and design the cards. That's kind of where it led, and then they were received pretty well. So they said, you know, hey, <laughs> you do this for football? I said, sure. Um, so then did the same thing with football, uh, and then we did the same thing with basketball. You know, the good in piece stands out for me because that was the first. And that was the one that got started. So that was an important piece to me. Michael Jordan was the first basketball piece I did. At the time I did it, you know, he was on his way to being that iconic figure. That piece was done before Space Jam. People would always come up to me and they go, oh, you did that? I said, no, Space Jam didn't exist when I did that. So this is the original for um, that Michael Jordan Fleer card. If you get in close, you'll see all of this. You know, after I paint it, I'll hand paint it, and then I'll airbrush over it, and then I'll go back in and paint the details in. So that's where you're gonna see all the little white highlights and stuff, that's all hand painted. And then the airbrush is used to, you know, create these nice flows. You'll also notice the kind of the glow around him. Again, that's me masking. Like I said, I have to cut into the board very delicately, and then I, and then I create a mask, and then I paint around that. So everything where you see a change of color had to be cut in mass. That's the way all of these are done. It was something new, right? The, the idea of insert cards was a very new concept. FLIR wanted a more high-end product. And so, you know, uh, on the initial Ultra product line, I basically introduced them to the concept of being able to use computer and computer technology. And again, this is still very early computer technology. What you can do with computer graphics, what you could do you know, with textures and style and a lot of things like that. So there are a number of things that you know, we were responsible for kind of introducing not only to FLIR, but also into the hobby. After the card stuff, I took a little bit of a hiatus from doing art. We ended up uh, in a deal um, down at Universal. So I was, um, you know, creating content uh, for, you know, movies and film and television. After that, we ended up moving into video games. So working for, you know, EA and, and Sony and all of them as art director, creative director, um, creating products for those folks. For the last, really, couple of years, I started getting back into it, working on the small stars, which were the, you know, line of collectible figures that people have seen that are that people like a lot. We had the 12 inch versions have been out for the last five years. And this year we came out with the six inch versions, the Small Stars Minis. See that uh, package in there? So what that is inside that box, you will get two, one or two, depending on where you get it from, of our mini prints. And there, I believe there are 10 different versions of the mini prints. So right now, the, the early ones, that test versions, have this black border that you see that I'm holding here. People were buying these, but they weren't opening them. Because when again, there's nothing to tell you that those are in there, and I did that on purpose. And so the people that are opening them are in for a little pleasant surprise. Beckett starts grading these bad boys, the, then you're gonna have something. I'm having fun again creating 
images that tell stories and hoping that I don't have to edit myself too much. You ask about my collecting. This, um, most people don't know this exists. And most people don't know that nobody knows I have it except for one person. In the box, that's an 86 flare set, right? Difference here, guys, is every single card in this box is authenticated and autographed by the player. So it's a complete, complete set, stickers and all, of 86 Fleer with every single card signed. And they're from, these signatures are all from, from the 80s. Now the key cards you're going to want to see, there's the Jordan, right? And there's the Jordan sticker. Terry Smith, a true legend in the sports card hobby. The Slab of the Month is brought to you by MySlabs.com. This 2017 Panini Prism Patrick Mahomes rookie card, graded a PSA 10, sold for $7,950 on MySlabs.com, with the seller paying just $79.50 in commission. MySlabs.com home of the 1% Seller's Commission. Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics, and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax, and now slab comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution. SportsCards.com is the official sponsor and online store of The Card Life and supplier of the packs and boxes I rip every month. Great rip here today, uh, sponsored by sportscards.com. I'm gonna start off looking for a Ozzie Smith rookie here in the 1979 tops. Then we'll get some basketball, we got some hockey and some baseball, and then we have their sportscards.com select collection. So see what's in there. But uh, let's start with the Ozzie Smith here. <laughs> Johnny Bench All-Star. Biff Pocoroba. <laughs> Another NL All-Star, Pete Rose. Mm -hmm. 2015-16, Opeachy Platinum. And our auto is Paul Coffey, Blue Rainbow Autograph. Taylor Hall. Hey, we got a bonus auto, and it's a rookie. Kevin, F-I-A-L-A, -A, numbered to 99, white ice auto. That's really cool. Got gold here. You got me goose bumped up now. <laughs> And a goalie, hey, that's cool. Jonathan Quick, it's one of the goalies I know, so that's kind of cool. Gold to 50, a little off-centered, but still a really nice card. Look at that. That does not look like my baby, does it? Oh, Jason Kidd. And Shaquille O'Neal. All right, we got Russell. And then an Allen Iverson All-Star patch. Authentic Game Worn All-Star Warm Up. That's kind of cool. All right, let's do the uh, 2015 Bowman, Corey Seeger, and Bellinger. Looking for my nemesis. -es. And then Yastrzemski, too. I do collect cards of guys who've taken me deep, so. <laughs> I don't have a Yastrzemski first Bowman yet. Then we got a Chris Bryant rookie card right there. Blue Eddie Rosario rookie. That's kind of cool. 
number to 150. Oh, Syndergaard, rookie. Followed by uh, Houston Street and Carlos Correa, rookie. Very nice. All righty, and then sports card collectibles. It's kind of heavy. Probably shouldn't shake it too much. All sports card variation. 75 to 150 cards from 1911 to 2021. Tom Seaver. I mean, just a Pete Rose auto thrown in here, Rob. <laughs> Very nice. It's just a random Pete Rose auto just chilling in there. <laughs> Whoa. Well, this has uh, Braille on it. Premier Braille sports card. That is crazy. Jim Plunkett. That was an awesome rip. Got some really cool stuff here. And uh, thanks again to sportscards.com. Make sure you check them out. Sportscards.com is the official sponsor and online store of The Card Life. Grab your own select collection series box, just like the one I just opened, right now at sportscards.com. Whether you're a longtime collector or just started investing in the hobby, Cardbase is the premier app to effortlessly manage and monitor your sports card collection. Access our daily updated database of millions of cards, create watch lists, track your portfolio, or watch trends in specific card markets, including the hottest cards in every sport. Stay on top of the sports card market with Cardbase. Download the app now on iOS and Android or on the web at getcardbase.com. Tired of paying 10%, 15% or more to sell your cards, comics and digital collectibles? How does 1% sound? Too good to be true? Well, not anymore. MySlabs.com is the web's premier user-driven marketplace for buying and selling slabbed cards, sealed wax and now slab comics and digital collectibles. So the next time you're forced to pay 10% or more to sell something from your collection, head over to MySlabs.com and join the 1% revolution. Welcome back to The Card Life, presented by Loot. These are the exact players pulled from a pack of 1986 tops from an Oakland resident seven years ago. You can get a pack of these for about three bucks online. Brad Baluchian, a professor in the Department of Biology at nearby Merritt College, found these players in a pack in the summer of 2014, and it took him on a remarkable journey. I'm a biology professor and usually write about science. My specialty is entomology. I study insects. So this book is kind of outside my usual realm. I've always wanted to find a way to catch up with and write about the guys that I collected as a kid. I'm a child of the late 80s and the junk wax era and have bought thousands of cards and hundreds of packs and always was a little bit strange because my favorite players were not the Roger Clemens and the Barry Bonds of the world. They were, they were the Rance Mullenix and the Don Carmens of the world. And I always wonder what happened to them. That, that where are they now theme I think is resonant in any industry. And realizing that I don't know the players anymore because I don't really collect the cards got me thinking about those cards from my childhood which got me thinking about how we would buy the wax packs which got me thinking, what a cool device to center a book around a pack. What you would think would be my Holy Grail cards in that pack would be the, the Carlton Fists and the Doc Goodens, but I had an opposite reaction for two reasons. One, those weren't the guys that I liked as a kid. And two, I just knew from a practical standpoint that trying to track down and get 
Carlton Fisk or Doc Gooden to talk to me would be a, a tall order, not having any special connections in the sports writing industry. So I kind of had like an ug feeling when I saw those guys versus like absolute delight when I saw Randy Reddy and Lee Mazzilli and some of these guys that were not the stars. But I also thought that I, I always had a hunch that those guys would be much more interesting from a journalistic standpoint because their stories haven't been told. And yet they were there seeing the same things that Carlton Fisk and Doc Gooden saw, but they haven't been asked a thousand times about those things. I really tried to capture the place, right? So when I write about a small town of a few hundred people in Western Oklahoma, where Don Carmen grew up, I can contrast that with Compton and Watts, where Al Cowens grew up. And I, it was important for me that the book be as much a, a sensory experience for the reader as possible and show them the environment in which these guys grew up in so they could appreciate the differences and the similarities. And so I go through 30 states in 11,000 miles and 49 days and all across the country and, and write about these different places. These moments of sitting in Gary Templeton's living room watching kung fu movies and having him critique Matt Kemp's swing, right? Or sitting in Rick Sutcliffe's car and Ryan Sandberg calls. And you know, and it's funny because like, I can see his, the screen of his phone and it says like Ryan S, you know? And that's just surreal, right? Some of the serious stuff with Don Carmen sitting in a zoo and having him really open up and be so vulnerable about his relationship with his dad, sitting at Rance Mullenix's dinner table and saying grace with his family. These are, you know, these memories that I, I think I appreciated on the trip as I was going that this was a once in a lifetime thing. So I really got the most out of it. Then the theme started emerging, which is father and son. You know, so many of these guys having had strained or broken relationships with their fathers growing up or even now, and how that impacted them as players and as people, how they tried to not repeat history with their own kids. The challenge of being 35 and never being able to play baseball again and what you do with the rest of your life. And so inevitably these guys went through a period of often divorce, depression, drinking. So leaning into that, finding out what that was like. I didn't know when I set out that a book on a pack of baseball cards would intersect with race politics and relationships with spouses and kids. But for me, it was always about telling the human story behind the cards. I was left wondering how much are people thinking about like the humanity behind these cards versus investment potential. At least for me, that's what ultimately makes cards valuable is not the, the literal monetary value, but the representation of these personalities that occupy a very rarefied place in our society. And what does that mean? What is the cost? and the benefit of that. I think that's one of the take home messages of the book is, is that you'll probably read it and, and walk away like, oh, like I actually, I have a lot more in common with the Major League Baseball players than I ever realized. We'll see if in 24 years from now, someone knocks on my door wondering about the Matt Strom stories. Up next, we wrap up the show. Whether you're a longtime collector or just started investing in the hobby, Cardbase is the premier app to effortlessly manage and monitor your sports card collection. Access our daily updated database of millions of cards, create watch lists, track your portfolio, or watch trends in specific card markets, including the hottest cards in every sport. Stay on top of the sports card market with Cardbase. Download the app now on iOS and Android or on the web at getcardbase.com. It's time for another Card Collecting 101 presented by Loot. Let's talk about some of the most common card protectors. Penny sleeves are cheap, bendable plastic covers that quickly protect a card. Top loaders are a non-bendable plastic that provide more protection. Most collectors place cards that have value in a penny sleeve and then into a top loader. Lastly, one-touch holders, which are magnetic holders that minimize contact when taking the card in and out. That's it for the card life this month. 
next month you can see us in Denver. Until next time, I'm Matt Strom. Thanks for joining us on The Card Life presented by Luke.